welcome to this China edition by Union Solidarity International. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by our sister, Jennifer Chong, who is a researcher on labour issues in China and also has previously worked at the China Labour Bulletin. And we are especially pleased that Jennifer agreed to become part of USI's team. And we are talking to her today live from Hong Kong. Jennifer, first of all, hello and thank you for agreeing to be part of our team. My pleasure. Great. I really want to kick the conversation off today because, of course, it coincides with International Women's Day. And I know there's a lot of very important issues affecting women in the Chinese labour market at the moment that you would like to tell our audience about. So, Jennifer, over to you. Okay, sure. Uh, for women issues, I mostly I want to focus on the uh, female workers in Chinese factories, especially in the Pearl River Delta. Uh -huh. For women workers, they mostly work in the textile factories, such as handbag factories, and uh, although they, uh, most of them are very young, Mm -hmm. But uh, despite of their agenda, they have very strong awareness of their rights. So uh, for, like, for in, 20, in 2012, we did a survey on the strikes throughout the year, and we found one third of, eight, one third of the strikes were initiated by women workers, or they happened in women uh, factories. That's very fascinating, Jennifer, that there has been work that has been done into the incidents of strikes that are taking place and protests because of the, the situation within workplaces and a third of them, as you say, have came from women. Could you maybe summarise some of the issues that have provoked those protests and strikes, Jennifer? Is it simply related to pay or is there wider conditions that are affecting the female workforce in particular? Okay, uh, the reasons, they, we have a number of reasons. Some of them are generic, such as the low uh, salary, or lack of social security insurance, or uh, if the factory they relocate or they have mergers, and then the women workers, they don't get uh, legal compensation. So we have a generic uh, reasons like this, and we also have uh, issues like women, they are discriminated in their workplace, uh, such as especially in some Korean and Japanese factories where the management, uh, they have the like, stereotype against the women. Mm -hmm. Okay, and could, could you just explain, Jennifer, what are some of the forms of discrimination that are affecting women? How are they being treated differently within the workplace? And just another question as well, Jennifer, that of course the pay disparity between males and females working the same job across the world is very large. I think in the, the UK the pay difference between a man and a woman doing the same job is still around 20 to 15 percent. How is the situation in China with respect to men and women doing the same job and what is the pay disparities between males and females in, gen in general? Okay, so first of all, uh, for your question regarding the kinds of uh, specific discrimination, um, for instance, the women workers in some factories, they are they have very strict, um, like a restroom hours, which they find insufficient. Also, women have certain uh, physical or biological issues, like every month they will have period, but their management would not, uh, like, uh, would not understand, or they try, uh, they try. The, 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 management, the management, the style of management is not human enough. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. thank you for so, clarifying that. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, for the pay disparity, uh, on the factory floor, it's not that uh, uh, obvious, 
I believe it's more obvious in the like office or for the office workers because in Chinese factories, women workers and the men workers, the they work in different types of factories. For men workers, uh, the uh, we can uh, we usually find men workers in electronic factories or automobile factories. Mm -hmm. And the women workers, they are mostly uh, engaging in like textile textile jobs. So yeah, it's really difficult to uh, to say the pay disparity. But if the if women workers and men workers they work in the same factory, then there won't be a, a pay difference. Oh, Jennifer, that's fascinating, and you know that that's educating me. Never mind educating our audience about the the gender segregation in terms of occupation but what you seem to be saying is that where men and women are doing the same job within the same factory where there isn't that gender segregation in terms of the types of occupation the wages are the same but there is more there is more complications in terms of some of the issues that you referred to earlier about how women are discriminated against that's really fascinating Jennifer, I would love to uh, end the conversation today uh, because I know you've got some updates with respect to proposals that are currently getting discussed within the political sphere at the moment. Would you just like to tell our audience what the proposals are that are being discussed at the moment? Okay, sure. So, uh, uh, two aspects that I found very fascinating. Uh, one is uh, regarding the protection of workers' representatives, uh, because now in China, um, strike is an uh, extra legal affair, so there is no law uh, that is um, prohibiting strike, or there's no law pro protecting the uh, workers who strike. So this year's uh, National People's Congress which is China's legislation body, we see uh, some um, uh, NPC delegates together working with the uh, grassroots NGOs and the labor rights lawyers uh, proposing uh, specific uh, steps to protect the workers' representatives so that the uh, workers, when they find that they cannot negotiate with their bosses and when they find they need to uh, when they are forced to strike as the only way to get a better pay or have their rights protected, then they can be protected by law. Okay, and Jennifer, is, what is the likelihood of those proposals being approved in, in the official legislative bodies that workers who take strike to defend their terms and conditions or to increase their pay then it will be within the in the law and legally approved. Is there a a fair chance of success of that proposal being approved? Well, um, I'm not very optimistic about the uh, the proposal being approved because in China, first of all, the legislation process is very long, and on the, uh, sec the second issue is the Chinese government is not very open to uh, to this kind of wide cat uh, strikes. So the um, so. Um, uh, I'm not optimistic, but the good thing is there are voices. There are voices who are concerned about the workers. So that's a good thing. Jennifer, mm -hmm. I, I think that's a perfect place to end our first conversation, and this will be part of regular updates on issues affecting workers in China. And you're absolutely correct in your analysis there that the, the most important thing is that with respect to the conversation about legal protection for workers going in strike, the important thing is there is a conversation that is ongoing at the moment and there is a, a body of people and organisations who are defending and working towards improving the rights of workers in China. Jennifer, thank you very much for participating in your first USI update on China. Hopefully it wasn't 
too daunting and difficult and rigorous for you, but I'm sure our audience would have been absolutely delighted and genuinely informed and educated by what you've told us today. So thank you very much. You're welcome.